Okay, so this section's on rules of exponents. So when I have the bases are the same, I add the exponents together. So this is x to the 3 plus 5, which is x to the 8th power. Here, I'm going to take all of my constants first. So I have a negative 24 over 2. And then I'll add my x squared and my x. So I get x to the 2 plus 1 power. And then I have my y's. So I have a y to the 3rd plus the 2nd plus the 4th. So this gives me a negative 12 x cubed and a y to the ninth power. Power to a power. So that means that I multiply those powers together. So this is x to the 15th power, which makes this guy uh, a to the 8th power. I, if I have exponents, I can distribute them. So this would be 5 to the 5th power and p to the 5th power, which would be 3125 p to the fifth. And then if you want to know how I do that fast is um, the fifth power, I actually use my rules of exponents. So I would have done five to the fourth times five. And five to the fourth, if you don't know, is the same thing as 25 squared times five, which is 625 times five. And then it'd be really easy for me to do 3125 from there. So I do use rules of exponents to help me with my arithmetic. So I'm going to distribute my third now, going back to this question. 3 to third, x to the 4 times 3, y to the 2 times 3. So I get 27, x to the 12th, y to the 6th. I will distribute my exponents first. So I get 2 to the 3rd, a to the 12th, b to the 3rd, 4 to the 2nd, b to the 2nd. So this gives me 8 times 16, which is 128. So 128, a to the 12th, and b to the 5th, because I add these exponents together. Quotient, so if I have the same base, then I subtract the exponent. So this is 8 x to the 3 minus 1, which is x squared. Here, I would subtract the exponent, so 3 to the 4th minus 2. I'm going to bring this fifth to the top so I don't end up with negative exponents, so a to the 8 minus 5, and then b to the 3 minus 1, so this would be 3 squared. Just kidding. a to the 3rd, b to the 2nd, which is 9a cubed b squared. Anything to the 0 power is 1 because if I have b to the 4th over b to the 4th, this is b to the 4 minus 4, which is b to the 0 power. But anything over itself is 1, so that's why b to the 0 power is 1. If I end up with a negative exponent, like if I would have gone r to the... 3 minus 7, this would have given me 1 over... This would have given me r. I'm getting ahead of myself. r to the negative fourth power, which is 1 over r to the fourth. I don't like to try to do negative exponents, so I try to, like, think ahead, right? And so if I would have brought the 7 up to the top, I would have had a negative exponent in the end, which I would have had to put to the bottom. Or I could have just jumped all the way over and said 1 over r to the 7 minus 3, so 1 over r to the fourth which makes it hard sometimes when I teach it because I'm like, oh, I would have automatically just made him always a positive exponent and try not to make him a negative one. Okay, so I have a negative 9 and a negative 27, so that is negative 1 third. And again, if I bring the two, the negative 2 up, this would have been an m to the 3 minus a negative 2 power. My end of the fifths cancel out, and then I have a 1 over y to the negative 4th. So this would have been a negative m to the 5th power, and I would have brought the negative 4 power up, so this would be y to the 4th all divided by 3. Here, um, my negative 2nd power I would distribute, so this is 5 to the negative 2nd power, p to the 4th power, because I multiply my exponents together, 2 squared, p to the 6th, so then I would have had 1 over 5 squared, 2 squared, p to the 6 minus 4. 
And then that would have given me 1 over 100 P squared. And that's it for this lesson.